Hello and welcome to RPG Tips again. As I said on my last video, on this video I'm going to talk about which tools and resources I find useful on my solo games. And I know I promised that I would explain the tools that I have created, but I've decided to split that video into two, this one and the next one, so I can here show you a barrage of tools and a myriad of things that I use for my games and rapidly talk about them so if you find something that you find useful or attractive you can quickly get into it and in the next video more relaxed I'll be able to explain the tools that I have created and how I play my solo game. So getting right into it this video is going to be composed of five sections. The first one is going to be about rule sets that are specifically designed for solo games. The second one is going to be about one specific author which produced a lot of very interesting solo products and I think it deserves attention. The third one is going to be about story drivers, things that you can use when you don't know what's going to happen or when you want to generate a new situation. The fourth one is going to be about products that contain cool random tables and generators including websites. And the fifth one is going to be about mobile applications that I find useful to play with. Just as a side note, I will try to put in the video description every product that I've mentioned with a link to it. As I'm going to talk about some potentially arcane things and obscure things, I may not find a link for everything, but I'll try to do it. First section, rule sets that are designed specifically for solo games. Here I've got three suggestions. If you remember when I talked about Mythic, I said that it was a solo game meant to be as a wrapper, something that you plug over your favorite normal role-playing game and it allows you to play it solo. Here in this case, I've got three different rule sets and only one of them is a wrapper. The other two are complete games. My first suggestion is Scarlet Heroes and every product from Cine Nomine games. Why Scarlet Heroes? Because it's specifically designed to take your old D&D OSR adventures and gives you rules to play them just with one character, with very simple modifications to the base OSR Dungeons & Dragons rules you can play everything just with one character. One thing that makes this even more interesting is that Cine Nomine Games has more products, specifically Spears of the Dawn, Godbound, Stars Without Number and Silent Legions, that allow you to play with the same rule sets in an African fantasy environment, with demigods, in science fiction and in a Cthulhu private investigator environment. You can take the rules from Scarlet Heroes and adapt them to any of these games and it works, allowing you to play in any of these environments and settings with a rule set that is balanced to play with just one character. Additionally, this allows you to play any other OSR game that follows the same Dungeons & Dragons conventions such as Labyrinth Lord, The White Box, The Black Hack, any of your favorite ones, in this same way, taking these small modifications you can play with just one character and it won't die instantly. The second rule set I wanted to talk about is Iron Sworn. I know that I've already mentioned it several times before, but really it deserves every praise that I can give it. It is awesome, it's sublime, it's the best solo product I know of. The uh, only thing is that it's based on the Power by the Apocalypse engine, which is very good, but it may not be your cup of tea, it's a bit more on the narrative side. But that's the cool thing for me regarding a solo game, that it ties the solo mechanics and the actual game mechanics into just one. The only limit that I would apply to Iron Swan is that it's designed specifically for a very low power environment. The last rule set I'm going to mention is called One Man Army by Ken Wai Lao. And it's actually a modification of the 5th edition rules to allow you to play with just one character which is very good because normally 5e is balanced for a party of 3 to 5 characters. This is actually the only product I'm going to mention in the rule set section that is done by a fan and not an official product, something that you can buy. It offers three different ways to play, one of them basically is being take two character classes at the same time, which would be close to the Gestalt modification in Pathfinder and 3.5, and the other two basically make you kill faster and be killed slower. That's it. I don't know if it's really balanced, because I haven't tested them that much, but it's a very good way of trying 5e on your own, without having to balance the encounters. Those were the three rule sets I wanted to tell you about, but that doesn't mean that you must use a rule set that is specifically designed for a solo game. Of course you don't. 
The beauty of the wrapper games like Mythic is that you can plug them onto any RPG you want and play them as is. These rule sets are just specifically balanced so you don't die instantly because normally most RPGs are balanced for a party of 3 to 5 characters. So if you want to play, for instance, the Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game, which I will probably end up doing in my channel, you can do it with Mythic. You just have to be aware that you're probably going to die horribly and very fast. Does this mean that you cannot use them? No, of course not. Just be aware of what you're doing. Either homebrew something that makes you more durable, or balance the encounters you find so that you don't die instantly and horribly. The second category I wanted to talk about today is actually every product from one editorial, which is called Conjecture Games, and it's actually just a product of one mind, the mind of Sack Best, which sadly passed away, but his legacy lives on. I've got four products from him. The most well-known one is called the Universal NPC Emulator, or UNE, or UNI, UNE, I don't know how to pronounce it. But it's a very, very good tool to generate NPCs on the fly, and not only their personalities and appearances, but also what do they talk about, which is something that we usually struggle in, in our solo games. The other three products I have are Bold, the Book of Deeds and Legends, which serves to create backstories and histories, the Conjectural Role-Playing GM Emulator, which actually is just a substitute of Mythic, so I haven't used it that much, and the ISC, the Inferential Scene Crafter. This one would be the equivalent of the Adventure Crafter. It allows you to generate opening scenes. I really want to emphasize it. I've just glossed them over, I've been very fast because I want to cover a lot of things, but really, check out the Universal NPC Emulator. It's very good and it's going to improve your solo games for sure. Now, the third category of products is the story drivers, the things that we use when we don't know how to make the story progress or advance, so we turn to randomness to generate some things. Of course, you could always just roll in some random table, like the event meaning in Mythic, to answer the question, what happens now? But these products go a bit further. They are useful not only to generate what's going to happen now, but also to give your story a more cohesive structure. The first product, of course, and now we'll expand it on its own video, is the Adventure Crafter on the Mythic series, but I haven't talked about it yet. The second product is the Nine Questions Method by John Fiore, and it's actually a very good way of structuring your game if you want to play something very fast that concludes and it's cohesive. The way it does this is by structuring your game in nine setup scenes, and in each of them you answer and structure the scene around one specific question. So for example, the first question may be, what actions consistent with the heroic motivation do the heroes take that bring them into conflict with the looming hostility inherent within the setting? Then you have to first be the PC, you choose if you're going to be defiant, if you're going to infiltrate, if you're going to pursuit, or if you're going to combat something that will bring you into conflict with something else. Then you use a random idea generator to generate the scene and you play it out. Then you move to the second scene and the second question is what unusual event occurs soon afterwards? As you can see, this is actually guiding you to specifically answer the things that make your story structured and cohesive. So again, if you really need something that forces you to have an introduction and a conclusion, this is a very good method. The third story driver is called Perilous Intersections by Rory Brace Buckle, which is a name that may ring a bell for some of you. He was the guy behind the incredibly famous Rory Story Cubes, which are actually a very good idea generator if you're of a more of a visual oriented guy. And Perilous Intersections is actually inspired by both the Mythic system and the Nine Questions method. In fact, one could say that this is kind of like the big brother of the Nine Questions method, because it not only frames the scenes in a specific way, but it has scene sets, different story phases, and it forces you to answer a specific question about the story at the end of each scene. So it's actually driving the story to a conclusion every scene. It's very good. It's a bit more complex and it frames the story a bit more than the nine questions method. So if I had to sort the three story drivers I've talked about, the adventure crafter, the nine questions method, and perilous intersections, I would sort them in terms of complexity, going from the adventure crafter to the nine questions method to perilous intersections, in terms of how the story is framed and driven. The adventure crafter is very good and very simple just for generating scenes or plot points, but it doesn't have a cohesive framework in you in which your story is generated. The nine questions forces you to a set of nine different scenes 
but it's just that and it forces you to answer one specific question per scene while parallel intersections is a bit more complex but a bit more diverse too it allows you for a bit of leeway in terms of how the story goes that way you can choose which product fits your way of storytelling we've reached the fourth section of the video which i've named cool random tables and generators of course if i wanted to tell you about every random table and generator there is in the internet, I would die. First, I have to go back to the two first rules that I've talked about, sine nomine and iron sworn. Both, well, sine nomine is actually four or five different products, but these two have extremely good random tables. Sine nomine is actually characterized by its outstanding support for sand sandbox type games, in which everything is generated by a random table normally. So if you want to generate your own Cthulhu Mythos because you're tired of Nyarlathotep, you go to Silent Legions and you can generate your own Elder Gods. If you want to generate some ruins to investigate a dungeon, then you go to Scarlet Heroes, which actually, yeah, I don't know how I didn't talk about this. Scarlet Heroes has, apart from the rules to, of solo playing, it has an Oracle that serves as a substitute for Mythic, and it has rules for three different kinds of adventures. Wilderness adventures, urban adventures, and dungeon adventures. The wilderness adventures are a hex crawl, which if you don't know what it is, Google it because it's one of the typical ways of playing. The urban adventures are actually framed with a very extremely good way of structuring how the story goes with points for the adversary and points for you. And it's limited, so you know that the story is going to end and it's going to be framed in a very good way. The only limit it has is that the random table it has are for the Asian environment that it's set in but you can adapt them to whatever you want. Really, check them out, they are extremely good. And the dungeon adventures have a random dungeon generator on them. Of course, Scarlet Heroes is the game that offers the most support for solo games because it has rules for that. But as I said, every Cine Nomine game has extremely good random tables and game master support. Check them out. Iron Zone has actually very, very good tables too. And it's focused on mainly three things, wilderness, interesting locations, weather, human settlements, and NPC's reaction both in dialogue and in combat. Really, it's a gold mine. Check it out. Even if you're not going to play the game, just extract the random tables and use them because they are So apart from Mythic, the Cinenomine games and Iron Zone are my main source of good random tables. You can find random tables everywhere. The Dungeon Master's Guide from 5e has them, the Pathfinder Game Mastery Guide has them, any OSR product has them. You just have to find the tables that fit the thing you want to generate. So for example, if you want to generate very good critical hits, you would go to something like Zweihander or the Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game. If you want to generate interesting corruption effects, you can go to Shadow of the Demon Lord. Now, all the products that I have found useful in terms of their random tables are, for example, for dungeon creating, there's a series by, I think it's Kabuki Kaiser, which are called Mad Monks of Quantum and Ruins of the Undercity. Both are ways to generate and play in on the fly your own mega dungeon, which is good. Then there's the D30 Sandbox Companion with lots of interesting D30 random tables. The Instant Game Book, which has rules to create an instant settings. So for instance, we use the instant game tables to play one evening using Mythic in a setting which was the French Revolution and we had to infiltrate the catacombs to reach a palace. It, it was interesting. It was very fun and you can generate very wacky results with it. I really recommend it. Then there's this huge monster of random tables which is called the Ultimate Toolbox. I think it's something like 400 or 500 pages. It's really crazy. It has everything. I just keep it mostly for reference. If I can't find something in my normal tables, I go there because I'm sure that they'll have something. Then of course there are very interesting websites like Dungeon, Chaotic Shiny, there's also one very good website which I use for everything, which is called fantasynamesgenerators.com. It has name generators for whatever you can imagine. It's, it's crazy, it's obscene, it's very good. And the last product I want to talk about in this sort of generator part is called the Game Master's Apprentice. It's actually a deck of cards, it's not a random table, but it contains 14, I think it's 14 generators per card. Let me show it to you. Okay, as you can see, this is cramped with details. First, in the upper part, we have three oracle answers to your yes or no question, random dice rolls, 
a random number extracted from a normal distribution on the upper left part, a verb, an adjective, and a noun that you can mix taking out different cards, rooms, sensory inputs, belongings, names, catalysts, virtues, locations, vices. I mean, really, just using the Game Master's Apprentice, which actually comes in several different flavors. You've got the base one, which you've got the fantasy one, sci-fi one, and some more. Just with them, you could play one game. In fact, I did the test and I was playing in Subway, in the Metro, without writing anything, and it generally turned a very interesting story. The Game Master's Apprentice is actually one of my favorite products out of the whole solo gaming sphere. Really, they are very, very good. In fact, if I had to tell you my top five products, I'm sure that the Game Master's Apprentice would be, I don't know, in, in it. Now we've reached the last section of the video, which is interesting apps that I recommend. I'm going to talk about two apps for Android and one for iOS. The first app for Android, it's actually the most useful one in the whole app category. It's called Adventure Smith, and it's just a collection of probably more than 100 random generators, random tables from other games. In fact, you've got some from Cinenomini games and the Mythic Oracle and stuff like that. And you've also got the Universal NPC emulator, so it's a very good way of using it without having to learn about it. The second app I wanted to talk about is called Custom Image Dice. It was an app that was originally created to create your own custom dice with images, but it also added a functionality to allow you to include your own decks of cards. Now, if you remember, I've just told you that the Game Master Apprentice is a deck of cards, so you don't even have to print them or buy the deck. You can just buy the digital files, upload them to the Custom Image Dice app, and have them on the fly wherever you are. In fact, I'm a bit of a fan of card generators and card decks because the visual images are, are very nice. And I'm going to show it to you in the last app I'm going to talk about, which is for iOS, only for iPad, in fact, and it's called Card Warden. I'm going to actually show you my iPad screen and talk about it at the same time. So here we are at Card Warden. As you can see here, I've created my play environment or play table. and I've got three decks on the lower part. This one is the Game Master's Apprentice Fantasy Edition, and I can bring it here. And the, the other two are random location decks, one from the Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game 3rd edition, and the other one from the Warhammer Fantasy, and the other structure from the Warhammer Fantasy dungeon delving card game. And here it is. The, the bad part of this app is that it forces you to scan every card on an individual basis, which is extremely cumbersome and tiresome. But it has some good advantages. For example, you can have, see, if you can see there are yellow arrows, those are drawers. And I can have more decks here. With more locations, for example, or NPCs. Or treasure. In fact, I think I've got more than a thousand cards scanned here. And there is an advantage of having a physical space. And it is that it allows you to create locations on the fly very fast. For example, let's say our protagonist is close to the hack tree. Okay, what's behind the hack tree? Oh, festival grounds. And next to that, an ancestral monument and a weather boat. Oh, that means there's a coast. And okay, if I go back, I find an isolated farm. Now we've got five different environments to play, very, very fast, generated on the fly, and we've got nice images to go with it. Of course, I have adapted my table to play in a sort of fantasy, dark, gritty game. You can select the custom background and you can select which cards are outside or, or in fact, which cards you scan. You can have different boxes and decks to customize for different games. And the added bonus is that you can also scan card games and you can play them here too. So that's the end of the video. I'll include a link in the video description to a document on my GitHub in which you'll have links to every product I've talked about. And in the next video, I'll show you the tools that I have personally created, which are basically a way of rapidly using the run tools that I want and generating a beautiful document of my play on the fly. Now, my intention with this video, as I said at the beginning, wasn't to explain everything in great detail. What I wanted was to show you a range of things 
And please, if there's interest in me explaining one specific product in more detail, then either you can hop by the Discord, the Mythic GME subreddit, or you can leave a comment on the video, and I'll be extremely happy to share with you my experiences with it. As always, I hope you've learned something, I hope you had fun, and I hope to see you again in the next video.